drawing really boring objects like boxes, um, cylinders, doing your ellipses, drawing cones, um, all of that stuff kind of seems boring. Doing still life, you know, it's it's one of those things that you have to do as an art student and nobody really seems to enjoy doing it, you know. Sometimes it's, it's hard to see the value with that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, there, you know, there's a valid point that, that a still life is kind of an outdated thing, whatever. But I would like to make the argument and suggest that you know, by focusing on these sort of basic forms and basic structures and, you know, learning how to develop an eye for drawing within a, a three-dimensional space rather than focusing on, you know, on a shape um, will help you with more readily applicable things such as figure drawing and so on. Now, the typical approach to <clears throat> a figure drawing looks something like this, where you follow the contour of the hairline, you come down, you go all the way around the head, follow the line of the chin, go up, Then you come into the facial features and you begin to draw the eye, the outline of the eye. You come over, you draw the outline of the other eye. Then you find any place where there's a rigid outline. within your reference material, your photo, or whatever. And you draw that. You know, if there's a little bit of curve to the nose, you might draw that. Definitely draw an, an eyebrow. So this is kind of like the approach that most people begin drawing with. And what you'll notice is that this focuses almost entirely on the two-dimensional shape of a figure, right? You do get things like the essential details, like you, you recognize this as a figure, right? And that's fine. That's, that's an approach. But I think most people hit a brick wall when they try to get uh, a higher degree of realism. From here, what happens, you know, people will draw out the hair, the outline of the hair, whatever, right? And you never really get to the depth. Then, um, you know, usually people will go in and begin to add value, right? Shading, as it's called, right? So you start to go in, you start to add, you start to try to add depth through value, right? And this works to a point. But what's happening is that you're still focusing on shape, right? You're, you're, you have a two-step process, which is one, draw the contour of something, and then two, fill it in with shading. So the problems occur when what happens when you get done with the shading and realize that you have put the nose in the wrong place or your lip is kind of the wrong dimension and a little bit asymmetrical. You have no way of um, telling early on um, when you've kind of messed up or if you need to make a change. So what we do with 
drawing, you know, in drawing with forms is we introduce more steps to the process. And when we draw a figure, what we're really doing is we're applying all of this knowledge that we've gained from drawing box forms, cylinders, and spheres into the figure itself. And we're going to do some things a little bit differently uh, process-wise. So we're going to start much the same way. We're going to start with a, a generic contour, a rough head shape. But really, in my head, what I'm thinking is this is kind of an, an egg form. And, you know, I've drawn hundreds of eggs at this point. So I'm not thinking of this as a flat shape. I'm already thinking of it as a dimensional as a dimensional form. And what I'm going to try to do is get these forms to overlap. Drawing a head straight on is one of the most difficult ways to do that because you don't have obvious corners of the form yet. Um, and one of the nice things about working left to right and drawing a reference the exact same size is that I can pull lines, my guidelines, directly over for the crown of the head and you know where the hairline is, where the eyes are, where the bottom of the nose is, and so on, where the lips are. So working digitally, this is kind of fun because it, it can take a lot of the uh, a lot of the guesswork out of out of drawing, and you can focus on creating the depth that you want to create rather than focusing on getting proportions correct. Um, and I'm, and you know another modern way is just to trace everything. And, you know, a lot of illustrators do that, and I don't think at this point that there's much wrong with that. Um, you can also measure, you know, side-to-side -side distances and bring them over really easily. Um, mine's pretty close right now. So what I want to do is work large to small. So one of the biggest forms in the head is, if you look at it from the side, is just the cranium. The other large form is you know, what you would call the face or the jaw, right? So if I work on this form and this form, bring them together, um, those are those kind of establish the major proportions. So we'll use kind of the, the eyes as one major section of the form. And we'll use the, the ridge of the eyebrows and what I'm doing is I'm going over to the to the photo and looking at areas like this where I see um, indicators that there's a change in the planar relationship, a change in the form. And I can go back and find that, find the forms on both sides. So what I've done here is I figured out where the corners of the form are. When you look at the head from the side, Essentially, you can think of the entire head as a box. And by doing things like finding the corner right there, what I've done is I found the corner of the box right here. It's just now I'm looking at it from the front. So then I can use things like the lighting on the left side of the, of the cheek to kind of create the front corner of the form. And I can use that light, follow it all the way down. Now, where most people fail is they say, well, you know, now that I found the light, I found that corner there, down there, and I've and that's all fine and dandy. I'm done. I don't need to bring it over to the other side. But the best way to do it is to say, well, I know that that light is there because the form changes. So if I bring that and follow the form around inside the contour on this side, I'm going to have a really powerful drawing because now I've indicated where the forms are both on the left and the right side. Um, and this basically comes from, you know, drawing through objects, right? Like if you, typical way to draw a cube is to draw two to three sides of it, right? But really what you want to do when you when you draw forms is draw through them as if you're drawing through a wireframe. Um, so what you're doing is you're understanding all sides of the form. So
So that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm trying to understand both the, the forms on the left, forms on the right, and I'm kind of ignoring, I'm using the light, but I'm ignoring uh, the specifics of it for now. Okay, so then I need to divide up into some smaller subforms, right? So you'll see that over here there's a ridge on the head above the eyebrows. And so I can kind of continue that and connect that to the existing brow ridge that I've done. Then what I want to do is find kind of the form that defines the mouth the jaw, and so on. So what I can do is I can go around the mouth up to where the nose is, and I can kind of complete this form. And what I like to do is I like to think about um, drawing parentheses around the figure. Every time I do something to one side, I just go back and do it to, do it to the other. So that way I'm able to judge the symmetry a little bit more. You know, no face is perfectly symmetrical, and your drawing doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. But as a process, I think that works really well. The next thing that I want to do is make an indicator of potentially where the eyes are going to go, and um, and find potentially where the nose is going to go between that. Um, you know, a lot of people put a line down the center. Um, I like to leave guidelines kind of outside because I feel like I can judge where that is uh, for the most part just by looking at the guidelines outside. That way I don't have to erase them later. So what I like to do here is first do what everyone does and follow the line of the nose in the light. Right, use that shadow to create the line down the nose. Then what I want to do is go back and do it on the other side. Most people don't don't um, necessarily use this line, even though it's um, even though it's there because the form changes. And essentially, what I'm doing is, if I were drawing a uh, a cube. Right? I could create value, right? I could, sh I could have one side in shadow, and then I could indicate where the top is. And I don't really have to put, you know, a distinct line between two areas if I use value, right? But in the early stages, I think it's useful just to go ahead and put those lines in. Right, just so I have them for reference. They can disappear later. The next thing that I want to do is go on both sides and establish the form of the nose. The nose, if you were to lay it down on its side, is kind of this, um, this almost pyramidal sort of shape. It's not really triangular. Um, and it's not really square either, but it involves both of those, uh, both of those ideas. You know, if you were to create a, a triangular prism and draw that form out, and then cut the form off, right? Essentially, what you have is a nose, and then you would you could modify the nose, put some nostrils in there, and you've got a basic nose form. So what I want to do is go over here and indicate. that form. And I can use the contour of the nostril to help me with that. Right. So what I've done here is I've taken I know this form really well, right? I can I can draw that form all day. But what I've done is I've kind of mod I've turned it up and modified it organically. So I could go out and draw this form like this, right? And it doesn't look like a whole lot. 
But then if I go ahead and take that form, modify it, I can make it look like a nose pretty readily by just making it slightly more organic, right? So what's behind this this curvature is this straight solid form, you know, modified boxes with some wedges, right? You could approach that form as a simple rectangular form with wedges drawn to complete it, right? So what you're trying to do is use these simple forms that you know how to do and make them a little bit organic to kind of help you get to the point where you're drawing stuff that you don't necessarily know how to draw per se, right? You're learning how to draw, you're finding these forms. Next thing is with the eyes, you know, we typically want to focus in quickly on the actual almond-like shape of the eye. But what we're really looking for is the eyeball, the whole socket, right? If we know our anatomy, our, our eye socket kind of goes around like this, right? We just go on both sides and find that eye socket interior of the eye socket maybe loosely right sketch it out lay it out it's starting to look a bit like a skull now but um, that's going to help us because we can use those lines that we've created um, to define some of the uh, skin around the eye the next thing you want to do probably is find the cheekbone and, it, and it's a form that runs behind the nose and over right probably should have done that before the nose but it's okay right so this bone runs that way around the skull and then bends over towards the ear right so when you find that um, you're creating a, a great deal of anatomical knowledge and form that you're bringing to the uh, bringing to the drawing. You know, the next thing that you can do is work into other medium-sized forms, right? Like we haven't done much with the mouth at this point, so I like to leave the lips for for the end, right? So we can come in and start to create some forms around the lips, right? We can create a form of the chin. We can work on some of the muscle structure around that. We can start to indicate potentially where the lips are gonna go, right? With a couple of tick marks. So already we've worked into some smaller forms. Now what's really happening underneath that is if you feel around your jaw and teeth, essentially what you have, you know, let's say this right here is your cheekbones and your eye sockets are gonna go right above them, right? Under it, what's happening is you have a half cylinder that represents your teeth. Right? It's kind of a goofy drawing, but um, in a certain way, it, it makes a kind of sense to think of, to, to think of it like this. So what we've kind of done is used some anatomical knowledge to kind of draw around that and indicate that form. And depending on what you're drawing, you know, you could create uh, more robotic looks or you could um, draw these kinds of forms under, underneath this first and then make them organic, um, which is totally fine. So I'll add another layer and, and kind of show you what that looks like. So if I have this form right here and I draw out the cheekbones really obviously, right, and kind of make them even boxier than they are, and then I can come down with the outer part of a cylinder. I can draw a cylinder here. Right? 
then I can come in and kind of erase the I can erase the back half of the cylinder pretty easily right so now I have kind of a, this this half cylinder that I'm working with and that can be an easy way to create um, to create lips and these kinds of you know curvatures that you're going to need to describe everything and this allows you to kind of let everything project right now the eye sockets kind of go back and then the nose can project off of this So you can kind of see that this is over exaggerating it, but it works pretty well as a technique. Um, so what you're really doing when you draw these basic forms, um, you know, cylinders and so on, is you're working your way up to, to human anatomy. Um, and then as you go into more detail here, you can start to overlap forms right if you think of the lips as an actual form what's really happening is this is projecting upward and over right you can wrap lines around the form this bottom lip has a form here right and it's going back and underlapping the lip here You have another form down here where you kind of might see a soul patch. And that's kind of intersecting with the chin itself. And then you have some connective tissue bringing it all together, right? Same thing, the cheekbone has some flesh and the forms are kind of overlapping, right? And then I can work my way out to the jaw. I can give the jaw some solidity. Part of what's going on too is that, you know, the more work you do inside the contour before you get out to the contour, the greater the opportunity you have to show depth. I can use things like the eyebrows, which I know where the eyebrows go because they go right along this form that I've established. See how they bend that corner? And then I know where the eyes go because they go right inside the orbital socket. And I can overlap the eyelids over the eye and overlap the flesh and so on. So what I'm thinking when I draw these lines out is I'm not drawing the outer edge of it. I'm trying to let them overlap. Now one of the, um, now we've ignored the hair to this point and that's fine. Um, but you know, shadows of the hair can come in and help too. We can draw where the ears are, get an indicator of those. They're kind of hidden by the hair in this situation. Now one of the most powerful things when you draw with forms is when you make marks you can follow the forms. So if we go down to one of these cubes we can make hatch marks that follow the forms right and then we can do cross hatching that follows the form as well. So when we apply that to a figure drawing we can go into the the um, dark side where there's some shadow and start to work with the forms. So we can say, well, the form's kind of going this way, right? And then it's maybe changing and going down this way, right? And then as it bends and changes, maybe the form bends and goes this way, right? Maybe I can cross hatch a little bit to kind of integrate those progressions and maybe I can 
bend the form this way too with cross hatching. Let it really evolve. And then I can intersect it up here, right? So what I've done is very simply overlap the form and then I can evolve it yet again to create the shadow going out onto the cheekbone in a more flat way, right? So not only have I introduced a little bit of value, I've also continued to reinforce what I've set up with the form. I can do that again with the lips, right? Or above the lips and draw out those forms this way through cross hatching. And then I can come down here, do it again, right? So if you're wondering how the old masters knew to what direction to do their cross hatching, because this is basically what they were doing, right? They were just following the forms that they set up through using these basic and really simple form ideas. And with practice, you can do it too. It's not too difficult. And you can even do that, you know, a little bit on the light side if you use not cross hatching, but just single direction hatching, right? Just helps things make sense. And this is one of the, the things where when you make marks, you suddenly have the opportunity to show off your personality, right? And your marks are going to be unique to you. It's kind of like a signature. So you'll develop a mark-making style all your own. I think that's one of the most fun things about drawing is that your drawing is going to look like your drawing because you're going to use uh, and apply the techniques in a unique way. So that's it. That's kind of my argument for drawing with structure and spending a lot of time doing the necessary work of, of drawing basic objects and basic forms so that when you um, begin to draw things like figures, you have a basis for uh, using forms instead of shapes.